encouraged I am that there's a group of folks here on a Saturday morning willing to see some farm kid from Meridian, Idaho. Uh. <laughs> I gotta apologize right out of the chute, okay? Because part of my shtick is where I was educated. And I know what part of the state that I'm in, so let me just ask forgiveness right now. I, I graduated not once or twice, for Boise's sake, so let's just get that out. <laughs> you know what? I, uh, uh, forgive me while I pull out my notes, because there's a few things that I want to make sure to touch base on. We were hoping to have our whole family here today, and it didn't work out that way just because of space limitations on the aircraft. But I got a couple of special people. I really like you to meet. One is my son, Benjamin, right back here. standing next to him, who's my encourager, my ballast in this thing called life, my best friend in life in 26 years. That's Carol. <laughs> I see a lot of faces that are familiar here today, but there's a few that aren't. And so please let me introduce myself. I'm Russ Fulcher, and I'm running for governor. <laughs> campaign would be this way. <laughs> uh, you know, let me just, uh, a few words about who I am and why I'm doing this. I'm a fourth generation Idahoan from Meridian. I'm a farm kid. We grew up on a dairy where they're not having dairies anymore. But our family on both sides goes back over 100 years. And so we've got deep, deep roots in this state. And I'm very honored about that. Been in the Idaho State Senate since 2005. I work in the commercial real estate business. But it's a time between 1983 and 2006 that I wanted to share just a few thoughts on. It. it was those years that I worked in the technology industry, and I spent most of those years traveling to other states and other countries. And why I bring that out is it's pertinent for this reason. When you travel outside the United States of America and you work there, you get an appreciation and a perspective about just how special this country is. When you travel and you work outside of the state of Idaho, you get just a little bit of a perspective on how special it is right here. And by the way, today it was important to me, although I know it's brief, and I'm so sorry to drag you out on a Saturday, I want to make sure to come here personally and let you know that if I'm successful, I'm not just a governor out of the Boise area. That's for this part of the state, too. You're important. I want you to know that right now. But that's, the, that's how I view our country and our state. We are special. We are unique. And this, the birth of this nation, I believe, was divinely inspired. And the people here are supposed to be the pinnacle of governance. But I'll tell you, I have spent the last three weeks traveling around the state, and I've got to meet some of you in that tour. And some of these, some of the people in our great state aren't feeling like they're the pinnacle of governance right now. In fact, Idaho has increasingly become a subsidiary to the federal government. The most blatant example in my mind of that is what's transpired earlier this year regarding the health care exchange. And it was our current governor that steered us down that path. If that gets implemented, that will be the single biggest expansion of government in our lifetime. Now, I know there's talk about that being delayed, and that's great, but I have a, 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 a basic problem with why it's going to be delayed, if it is delayed. The reason they want to delay it is to try to fix the system so it has a better chance for work. And that's not what needs to happen, folks. We need to repeal this thing, and we need to replace it. I also believe that we're going down the wrong path with some of our education policies and other federal policies. Today, the single largest source of revenue in the state of Idaho comes through the federal government. And they're bankrupt. We have, over time, forfeited some of our liberties and some of that decision-making to the government. And our political party is fractured. That's wrong. It's not sustainable for a free people, and we've got to change that. 
We're in a new age. This is an information age. And be successful in restoring prosperity through liberty. I believe that we do need new leadership. I believe that that leadership needs to be servant leadership that will put the people first. And it needs to have someone with the values and the heritage of our past, but also someone that understands and has a vision for our future. And folks, that has been my life. From the farm, to the fab, to foreign lands, we faith. The last 51 years of my life have taught me how to produce and prosper over the next 51 years. And it's done by empowering people with resources and incentives. That's what we've got to do moving forward. And it will be the ability or lack thereof of our next government to unify the conservative, common sense Idahoans. That's going to dictate the future of our state. And I believe that's going to impact the future of our entire nation. And here's how we do it. There's four things. We need to unite around the things that we agree on, or at least what I would argue the things that we should agree on. Number one, we do need to reform health care. But that focus needs to be on driving the cost down. That does not include a government exchange. That does not include the government mandate of Medicaid expansion. What it does include is putting the hands, or putting the money in the hands and the control of the people and encouraging competition with our providers. <laughs> Second thing we need to do is we have got to get access to our resources in the state. 62% of the land within the borders of the state, Idaho, for the most part, we can't touch for economic development purposes. We've got to have the access to those resources because we can't truly prosper without it. And gaining the access to those resources gives us the ability to fiscally wean ourselves from some of these federal programs that we desperately need to do. And that takes me to the third point, which is reducing dependency on the federal government. I am not an anti-federal guy, but let's face it, they are in debt. They're dysfunctional, and they are intoxicated with control. We've got to wean ourselves out. So those two are, are tied uh, directly to gaining access to the resources and reducing our dependence on the federal government. The fourth point is we've got to empower our educators and our parents. Idahoans need to be in charge of educating Idahoans. That means the curriculum selection and the student data control needs to stay here. Our teachers, our parents, and our students need to be empowered and encouraged. So folks, these things are doable. This is not pie in the sky. We are Idaho. We're sustained by a belief in God, a belief in ourselves, and a belief in our communities, not in a belief in government. Tell you real quick as we close what to expect over the next coming weeks and months. And uh, like I said, I wish they were all days like today, but it's not going to be that way. I am going to be attacked and vilified, and those views are going to be distorted. Okay? And I'm going to lose the battle to raise money. That's just the nature of this beast. Okay? We've got a, a very entrenched income. I'm going to lose the battle for money. But understand this. You are the voice. You are the ultimate deciding factor. And I do believe in you. Together with your support and wise counsel, we will put Idaho in its rightful place as a beacon of liberty, productivity, and prosperity of the people, by the people, for the people, I appreciate you so much. Thank you and God bless.